Good morning, buenos dias. I hope everybody's doing well today. We want to thank you, to thank you all for being here today this morning. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Gabriela Guerrero. I work with the Human Resources Office at the Highland Business Center. And as you already know, we were divided in five different groups and assigned one of the goals for the Student Success Initiative. My group has been working in goal number two. What is goal number two? Increase adult and developmental education course progressions to credit courses. But before I continue, I would like to introduce you to the members of my GALT. You may be asking yourself, what is GALT? As I was reviewing my speech last night, I thought to myself, if Dr. Rhodes can have his PLT, <laughs> I can have my GALT. Gavis Academy leadership team members are <laughs> Ginger Bennett, interpreter sign language specialist at Riverside Campus, Laura de la Rosa, administrative assistant at South Austin Campus, Aliso Martinez, benefits coordinator at the Highland Business Center, and Enrique Cantu, maintenance technician, South Austin campus. And yes, Enrique is not a ghost, and I'm not gonna pull him out of my sleeve like, a, like magic. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here with us today, but you're gonna see him in the video that we're gonna show for you in a few minutes. And all of us together, we are working for change. Please roll the video. Thank you, Gabby. Okay, as soon as this video was uploaded, it went viral. The next thing we know, we got an email from Henry. Hollywood called, gotta go. He had to go to California. <laughs> the video you've just seen, unfortunately plays out over and over and over again with our developmental ed students. Sadly, it doesn't always have this kind of happy ending. Working for change wants to be a part of more happy endings. We had an opportunity to meet with David Borden, who is our executive director of adult education and also goal leader for our goal number two. He shared some astonishing numbers with us. As you look at this slide, what you see is a classroom of 24 students going into the very first math course, basic math, in their developmental math sequence. Now, we get down to the final exam, and now we're ready to register and go into the next level, elementary algebra. We are now down 50%. 12 of the original 24 are going on. Now we're ready to go into our third course in the sequence, elementary algebra. Sadly, 
The number you see here is actually very positive and forward thinking that only 50%, and I say only, 50% of those 12, we're down to six, are going to go on to the third level. Actually, it's more like 25%. Then our final point here, as we are now ready to go into our final course, we've, we've come out of our final course, excuse me, and now we're going into our initial college level course, college algebra, college math, and so forth. We may only have three students. That's it, three. And it could actually be less. Again, 50%. Often it winds up only being 25. We recognize that as ACC, we are working very hard to change these numbers. We want them higher. We want us all to succeed. And that's what we're working for change to accomplish. Laura? Thank you, Ginger. Um, as G uh, Gabby mentioned earlier, all our, our uh, goal is to increase adult and developmental education course progressions to credit courses. So in doing so, we would like to gather information from non-traditional students to see why and how they did or did not benefit from these de developmental classes. So two, of, two options that we've come up with um, are either having the student take a survey or be a part of a focus group. And although um, surveys are a great resource for gathering this information, I think that the focus group would be, have more impact. And um, survey, 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 yes. Like I said, as you know, it can be a great resource, but we still wanna go with the focus group aspect. And why a focus group? Because we just feel that it would, be, it would allow the student to be more vocal in providing us with feedback and you know, telling us why, what they want to accomplish at ACC. And also information can be provided to them right there on the spot. It's a little bit more personalized versus a survey. Alisol? Included in the red folders we provided to um, PLT and uh, Stephanie is a timeline and a letter. How are we gonna make this happen? We're gonna reach out to certain faculty to gain, and attempt to gain their support. The way we're gonna do that is we've, we're gonna send them a letter, a personalized letter asking for permission. Included in that letter is a timeline of events. We're gonna identify students and encourage them to participate in this focus group. We're also gonna to attempt to gather goodies from our marketing department and the Riverbat to bribe them, and, or maybe even cookies, to ask them to participate. Food always brings uh, participants. Focus group discussion topics. How did the student feel when they first enrolled? How the student felt mid-semester? And how the student feels right before the drop date? Are they going to continue? Are they not? And why aren't they? Is it daycare? Is it transportation? Is it the cost of that book? Is it the cost of the CD that you have to purchase along with the book that's not always used. Who? We have certain criteria. We've looked at students and we've decided to choose the students or um, attempt to reach out to the students that are, are over age 25. Students that are enrolled in fall 2013, not only developmental education courses, but specifically the math. This is a timeline. This is our estimated timeline. Dates are not exact, but this just gives faculty an idea of our completion, of how we're gonna complete the project. Summer, we're gonna begin, fall. Final day to drop courses, but we are gonna attempt to start the focus group or have the focus group right before the drop date, because that's when the tests are occurring, and that's when they're making the decision to drop the course or not. We hope to gather all this information at the end of the semester. And we, we are gonna compile the data and deliver it to David Borden, who is the goal leader. We're gonna leave you with some final thoughts. In closing, we have been presented with the opportunity to, to put a face to the data so that we can find more effective ways 
to keep the adult learners in the classroom long enough until they reach their educational goals. So in the words of former President John F. Kennedy, there are risks and costs to a program of action, but they are far less than the long range risks and costs of, a, of comfortable inaction. Thank you, you all have a great day. I'd like to say something real, just real quick. We had a lot of help from the department uh, uh, soon Mertz's area. We want to thank your department for helping us. They also helped us in deciding on a focus group versus another survey. <laughs>